Oh, look, that's other people. All right, we're going to give it a couple more minutes and then we'll get started.
Can everybody open on shape and make sure that they have in their teams, you should have the intro to on shape class. And if you don't have that, let me know. And while y'all are doing that, I can introduce myself. Uh, my name is Gabby. I am on Team Dark Matter 14374 from Louisiana. I have been doing CAD for Dark Matter for five years. I taught myself five years ago. And since then, I've done CAD for two different FRC teams. And I've taught all of my team members how to CAD, as well as some FRC members and other teams. Um, so this class is going to be pretty basic. It's going to be taking you from not knowing anything to being able to make parts and assemble some simple things like that. Um, so I think most people are here, so we can get started. Uh, looks like everybody has the... Um, has the team. If you have any questions at any point, um, you can put them in the chat and I will answer them. So getting started, this is Onshape. It's a CAD software, pretty much what CAD is, if you don't know, is 2D and 3D drawings. And then you can also take pre-made CAD of 3D drawings or your own 3D objects and put them together. So in robotics, we use this to do any sort of custom parts for CNC milling or 3D printing. And if um, you can also use it just to design your robot. Um, Liam, can you put your email? You can you can send it to just me if you don't want to put it in the chat for everybody. Um, in the chat, and I will add you to the team folder. Um, so with that, we can walk through just the interface of Onshape. When you log into Onshape, this is what you will see pretty much. It's usually going to be on owned by me. Um, so first thing is owned by me. This is going to show you all of the documents that you own. It's These are all basically just different ways of showing you your documents. And you can always search in whatever you are in. Teams, I'm going to show you how to set up a team. A team is basically one of the ways that makes Onshape very collaborative. It means that you can add everybody to your team and your team folder from your, um, what's it called? From your team. And everybody will have access to the same documents in the same um, same folders and files and everything so everybody can work on the same thing and not have a million different robot files. It's important when you do have your team to have a long-term coach or mentor or have a team email create an account for Onshape and create the team because if someone is, if a student owns the team, then once that student leaves the team, then they're going to still be responsible for your document. So it's easy if you just have a team account, basically. And then whenever you do create a team, inside of that team, you're going to create a folder. And you have to have that be your shared folder. And then you can share it with the team. There's actually an option to share with the team. And then everybody in the team will have access to everything in that folder. And then from there, you can organize it however you want. We have ours organized by just season. And then in the robot, we have each mechanism. And on shape, you really want to have multiple folders for all of your different um, mechanisms because it will slow down your computer if you have a million tabs. And we'll get into what a tab is in a little bit. So to create your team, you're going to go to your account and then teams. 
and you, it'll show you all the teams that you're part of. And you could just hit create, and then you'll be able to add people to your team from there. Um, I'm the owner of that one. Um, so that's how you can add your team. One thing I do want to do, have everybody do while we are at this point real quick, is we're going to add something called MKCAD. And that's basically going to give you a bunch of robotics parts that are going to make your life a whole lot easier. So from Onshape, you want to go to your account up here and go to my account. And then go to applications. And then go to app store. For Onshape. Um. Once you have that, you are going to put in capital MK space capital CAD library. And scroll down until you find this right here. And once you have that, you can click on it and press subscribe. And this one is a free subscription and then get for free. Uh, so I'll give everybody a minute to do that. And I'm going to add you to the team right now, Liam. Once you have the application, you should be able to go back and refresh the page. And then you will have MKCAD and you will see this on shape access and press grant access. And author authorize application. Basically what this is gonna do is it's gonna let MKCAD be in all of your documents so that you can use it. Um, while you are catting. Okay, Liam, you should be in the team now. Uh, check your email, you should get an email about it. Okay, so now that we have MKCAD. We can. So, this is the interface. Public, you can always go and search in public documents. Sometimes they will have some things that you need. They'll have um, some of the MKCAD stuff is in public. You can search for, you can search for things like RevHubs and random stuff like that. We've for some reason needed to use like a CAD of a table that was in here. So that can be useful sometimes. And then you trash anything that you have um, will go in here for 30 days. You have to take it back out. So once we have our team, you will have your folders and you can go in the folders. To create documents in folders, you can just press create and then you can create your own document or folder or you can also import a file and you can select one. And then it'll say you can import with Y axis up or um, in centimeters or inches and you can select that. But that's how you would import a fully made document. So if everybody wants to go into the team and go into day one intro to Onshape, Um, so in CAD, there's multiple different uh, different tabs you can have. You can have what's part called a part studio, an assembly, and a drawing. Today, we're going to be making part studios. So to create your own tab, you're going to press this plus in the bottom corner and press create part studio. So, and then to rename it, you're going to right click on your tab. Right click on your tab and rename it to your name.
Whoever has a feature studio, I think you clicked the wrong button. It should be part studio, which is the one under that. So everybody can go ahead and make that and then make sure to rename it again, right click and then rename. It is this plus at the bottom, insert new tab, and then create part studio. And then right click it and press rename to rename it to your name. Can't find the plus button. Make sure that your window is all the way on your computer. It's at the very bottom next to the tabs. If it's still not showing up, um, refresh your page. And it should be there. So once everybody has that, we can get into um, some stuff in the part studios. Today we're pretty much just going to be going through refresh and the plus is still not there. Try closing out your browser. It should be there. Maybe press on shape and then go back into it. Are you able to see the tabs? Um... Okay, here's what we're going to do. It might be just not wanting this many people in there. So we'll make another document. Whoever is having trouble making their own um, Tab. Try and see if you could do it in this document. So that's going to be the plus button, create part studio, and then rename. It's still not working. Okay, then we're going to go back to this other one. I'm going to delete this folder, this uh document, and I'm just going to make tabs. <laughs> Now you can all claim one of those and uh put your name in there. Rename those to be yours. No, it should not be the computer you're using. Sometimes on shape it just throws a fit every once in a while. I actually had the same problem earlier. I was trying to open something. Um, it might just not like the fact that we have 10 people in the same document um, trying to do the same thing. It might be making it bug out if you don't have the best computer or the best Wi-Fi. Um, but your computer shouldn't matter. I usually run on shape on a 2013 Mac Book Air, so it shouldn't matter that much. Uh, 
Okay, now everybody should have. Make sure you rename the Part Studio. So right click and then rename. But now everybody should have one. So we can move on. <laughs> Can't rename it. What the heck? Oh my gosh. Who else can't have one? Oh, shoot. Oh, that's it. Okay, now everybody should have one. If you don't have one, let me know. Um, there, um, it's probably just overloaded with everybody trying to do the same thing at once is probably the issue that we're having. Um, when you do have your own documents, it will be the plus and it should be there. Um, so now everybody has their own documents and we're actually gonna get to doing some stuff. So first things first, being able to navigate around your parts. You can use the cube up here to spin around. They have all these different views for you. Also, if you hold right click and drag, you can also move around. Um, and then scrolling is going to be your in and out. And then your scroll wheel is actually a button. Um, your scroll wheel is a button. And if you hold down that button, you can uh, move around like that. And then F, if you press F on the keyboard, that's going to take you to like a less zoomed in view or a more focused view gonna bring you back if you ever get lost out in space if you press f it'll bring you back and then pressing in sometimes in can be buzzy buggy and not work but for the most part if you press in it's gonna take you to the nearest plane see now it doesn't want to work but yeah so that is how you can maneuver around and then also the wheel and the arrows, of course. Um, so whenever you start a new part studio, you're always going to have your front, right, and top plane. Those are going to be the planes that you start with that you're going to be able to start building your parts on. A part studio is just as it... No team. Oh, are you... Um... Someone had what well, are you um Bill William you in, are you in this part studio over here or can you not get to it? And you have no team. Are you are you in there? You definitely have the team because you're in this uh, document, which means you're in the team. Um, anyways, what I was saying is that's, that's how you move. And this is where you're going to create parts. So you always start with a 2D drawing that we will get to in a minute. And all those 2D drawings are going to be on these different planes. Um, just navigating around this um, part studio. This is your view cube, 
these are going to be all your tools at at the top. Um, all these are extrude tools that we will get to in a minute. Um, this is going to be your undo and redo buttons. This is going to be where you have all of your sketches and extrude. Um, what's it called? All of your sketch and extrude functions, I guess. You'll be able to see when we start doing that. And then once you have parts, those will show up down here as well. Um, you can always add comments in the document in the each part studio or assembly or drawing. You can add comments for other team members. And then there's also what's called versions in your version tree, which we will get to in a little bit. Um, so starting with our sketches, we're gonna go through all the tools for sketching. To start your sketch, you're gonna press the sketch button at the top left. And the hotkey for that, you could just press shift S and that will also take you to a sketch. Um, once you have a sketch, you'll see that you can't really press any of the tools or use anything because you have to select a plane. So you're always going to pick whatever plane you want, deciding depending on what you are making. So for this, we'll just start with the top plane. Um, so before we make anything, I am just going to run through all of the tools up here real quick or not really real quick. I'm not gonna go through all the tools. I'm gonna go through all the tools that you're most likely gonna use. If you see any tool that I don't go over and you want me to go over, just put it in the chat. Um, so the tools you can see are kind of separated by these little dividers. Um, so you these ones are some extrude tools and then these are all going to be your sketch tools. Um, all of these are your, what's the word, constraints. And then these are just kind of, uh, I guess you would call it maybe a function that you can do. Um, so getting into the tools, this is how you're gonna create everything. This is how you're gonna draw whatever it is that you're catting. So it's good to know all of these. First one is pretty basic, just a line. It creates lines. Um, when you press on it, you click once and then you could draw your line and then it's gonna start another line from that point. If you want to escape that line, you can right click and press escape line or you can also press escape on your keyboard. So, um, yeah, lines. Next we have rectangles. Corner rectangles are just going to be normal rectangles, just drawing them like a square from corner to the other corner. What is view only? I can't see the sketch tool on my screen. Oh, I think that's because I'm in your document. Edit anything. Um, should be able to edit. Can anybody draw anything? I'm so confused. Okay, if you are having problems, come into the team uh, and then go into the folder and create your own document. You can draw stuff on the main document. This is so weird. Did 
Did you make sure that you hit sketch and then selected a plane? And one thing that I forgot to um say is something else about Unshape that is pretty neat when it comes to collaboration is if you see all these letters up here, if you actually double click on one, you'll actually be able to see what that person is doing or drawing or whatever we're doing. Um, so you can actually find mine and follow it if you'd like. We have Zoom, so it's not that detrimental. All right, so if everybody's got worked out now, we can go back to this. Now you have to hit sketch, and then you have to select the plane, or have the plane already selected when you have to hit sketch. So anyways, we had the corner rectangle there. So that is going to be just corner click for the corner and then click for the other corner. Um, but there's a different type of rectangle called the center point rectangle, which is what we usually use. And that's gonna take from the center and then you're drawing out one corner and it's gonna bring out the rest. So that's just drawing from the center. William, what do you mean that you can't create anything with it? Mine isn't working. The sketch button should be up here and then you select your plane. This document view only. It's so weird. Okay, did anybody try coming in here and creating their own document? The Zoom is being recorded and will be sent out. Let's try create your own document and see if it'll let you draw. So, uh, from here, you would press on shape and create document. If you want to try just making your own document, yeah, make your own document in here and see if that would work. Or if not, try making your own document outside of the team and see if it works. Uh, you can name your document your name. And see if that works. I have no idea why it's not working. It typically... It typically would, because usually I've done classes like this, and it usually works.
Okay, breaking your own document seems to be working. Okay, now back to this. Um, so we did center rectangles. It's just a rectangle from the center. And then you can press escape to get out of that tool as well. Um, now circles, same thing. It starts in the center and you draw out for your circle. Um, but there's also an ellipse. And for the ellipse, you start in the circle and then you can draw the width and then the height of your ellipse. People are just weird. Um, arch, arcs, there are a lot of arcs, but the one that you're, you're gonna use the most is gonna be a three point arc. So you're gonna put one point in the arc and then the other point and then the height, I guess, of the arc is the third point. So first point, second side, and then the top. Um, there's also elliptical arcs, so you would draw an ellipse, and then where you want the arc, where you want the arc to start, and then end. And then very rarely we use tonic. So that's one end, the other end, and then up here. The only reason that we don't use conics very often is they're very hard to dimension and constrain, um, which we'll get into what those are. Um, and then polygons. Polygons we use a lot for things like um, hex shafts. Can't make new shapes. Did you create the sketch correctly? Did you press sketch and then your plane? And then you should have your tools. William. Um, so polygons, there are two different types of polygons. There an inscri there's an inscribed polygon and a circumscribed polygon. So the difference is an inscribed polygon. Okay, making the new document work. Yeah. An inscribed polygon means that um, the face that you measure is going to be from the face to the face. Um, so face to face. So like uh, the rev... Hex shafts, I believe, are inscribed hex shafts. So that is five millimeters from the face to the face. And then there's circumscribed polygons, which is um, from the corner to the corner is your dimension. So when you're using polygons, make sure that you know whether it's inscribed or circumscribed because it will make a difference when you find out that it's two different things. So to make it, you're just gonna uh, find the button. Uh, and then it's gonna make, uh, you're basically drawing a circle and then they have the lines inside for you. And then you're gonna create the circle and then drag just up and down will adjust the amount of sides that you have. Uh, but you can always adjust the sides with this little dimension right here and you can add or take away sides of the polygon. Um, points, it's just a point. Uh, points are going to be more useful when we get into constraining things, so I'm going to get into that when we do that. Uh, and then text, text is kind of weird because most of the time your text, when you create your text box, you're creating the size of each letter. Um, so you want to put how big you want a letter and then type what you want. And then they have a few different, oh, they have more um, fonts. You cannot upload your own font, sadly, to OnChain. Um, so you have to pick your own, whatever font they have on here. And then they'll have being able to mirror it or flip it. And then it will show up there. Um, and you are able to resize it. Um, Rule of thumb in CAD is if it is blue, then you're able to resize it or move it in some way. If it's black, then you are not able to do that. This is for designing your robot. So this is how you make 3D printed parts. That's what we use CAD for um, in robotics. This is how you make any custom parts or just designing the robot in general. 
Oh, William. Um, construction I will get into in a minute. Uh, all these things are there. Um, so I'm just gonna put a rectangle right here. Um, so a construction line is basically oh shoot. Um, is just a line that doesn't really exist. It's kind of more like a guideline is what you would use a construction line for. So you can see when the line is solid, it gets like a solid kind of grayish color inside. That means that it is a um, enclosed shape. So I would be able to actually extrude this shape since it is that um, gray color. If you make that a construction line that goes away and you can't extrude it because it is just like there's no line here. Um, so you use a lot of construction lines for constraining things, which I will get into when we get to constraining. Um, but you can also use it to lay out a lot of um, like your robot. Like if you're designing a drivetrain that's custom, you can lay out your where your gears are and where your wheels are with construction lines. So you can kind of use it as a reference or a guide. Um, so we use construction lines a lot. Okay, I still need that. Um, next is a sketch fillet. Um, sometimes you want to round out your lines. If you're using any type of CNC, you have to round out your lines. And you can do that in a sketch. Um, typically, we prefer to do that after um, in the extrude, but you can also do it in the sketch. Um, trim, that's basically going to get rid of any extra lines. So like you can have a sketch fillet. You can also, a different way to do a fillet is with the three point arc. Um, and then we can constrain that later. But you can take, now I want this rounded, right? So I don't need this part anymore. So just for the sake of how your sketch looks and how it's set up, you can actually trim those lines off. And it's still gonna function just like a normal square. You're just not gonna see those extra lines. Um, and that's what the trim tool is for. Um, and then let's just say I have like a weird shape. Um, the offset tool is going to do exactly that. It's just going to offset your line so that you kind of end up with a ring around it, I guess you could say. So like if you wanted to print something that had a wall, you can make the wall with this. Um, and you only have to dimension this one part and say, I want it to be 0.5 inches off and every side will be five inches off. So you're actually able to offset anything like that. Like if you're making a box, you can make the walls of the box like this. Um, and then we have linear patterns, which is exactly what it sounds like. So that is this tool right here, linear pattern. You, oh, ah, no. Um, a circle. Uh, so this is how we make whole patterns a lot of time. We use linear patterns to make our whole patterns. Um, so, oh no. You just click linear pattern and then your whole or your circle. And then this number down here is going to be how many you want to the right um, or to the side. So I can change that to five. I could change it to 50 or I could change it to 50, uh, 500 if I, for whatever reason. And then this number right here is going to be the distance from the center of each of these. So you can change that to five. Um, and that's going to be that distance. Now you can also go up with your linear pattern. So all you have to do is grab that arrow and go up. And then same thing here, that number is gonna be how many high it is and then how, how far apart they are. Um, when you're doing a linear pattern, you'll see that there's this little mouse with the check mark on my, on my cursor. You do have to right click when you're done, otherwise it will go away. Um, so I, just gonna delete these and then give myself another circle. Um, so the next pattern tool that we use a lot also for whole patterns is a circular pattern tool. For the circular pattern, you do need a circle for it to follow. 
So most of the time you're going to use a construction line for that, a construction circle. So just a circle that doesn't mean anything. And then put your hole or whatever it is that you're making a pattern on, on, on that um, circle. So then you press circular pattern and you're going to press the circle that it is. Now, no matter where your circle is, so uh, for example, if my circle was out here and I wanted the circle pattern over here, when you press circular pattern, the middle of that, the center of the circle is always going to be at the origin. So you just have to click this little block box and bring it to the center of the circle that you want to use. And then it's going to center, it's going to make them all even distance apart. So you just add the number that you want um, of circles that you want. Um, so for, and your circle diameter is going to be the size of like how far you want it apart. So for instance, the acrobatics hole pattern is the holes are 0.7 seven inches apart. So you would make your dimension 0. 0.770 and that would be the acrobatics hole pattern. So that's your circular hole pattern. And then they also have what's called transform and transform is pretty cool. So if I have a big sketch of a bunch of different parts, if I wanted to move this, it would, well, typically it would like get all weird. Uh, let's say I have it like, I don't know, like that. And then that line would move and be weird. Uh, no. This one. So you can actually use the transform tool. This is more for when you have bigger sketches. Um, you can select everything and then it'll allow you to move the whole sketch as one to a place instead of having to redo it in a different spot. And then this, I don't know if anybody uses Adobe Illustrator or anything where you have a vector image, but you can actually create something as a vector image in a program like Illustrator and export it as what's called a DXF file and import it into Onshape. And it will actually, like if you have a certain font that you wanna use, if you make it to size in Illustrator, it will import to Onshape as a sketch and you'll actually be able to use it, which is how like my team has, uh, we have our own font on our side panels or we have our little uh, mask guy because we took the file and imported it onto here. That's mostly an aesthetic thing. Um. Now, where most of this can start making sense is coming within with the uh, constraints. If you've already taken geometry, um, all of these constraints are going to make a lot of sense. And if not, it might not make enough sense, but it doesn't matter uh, because I learned CAD before I learned geometry. <laughs> um, but all these constraints are just like what you use in geometry class. Um, so coincident is just going to make uh, basically it's just going to take a point and put it on a line or a circle or whatever you have there uh, same thing with the circle I can take the circle and put it on that point um, most of these you'll see like if I have a line, it'll have yellow and it'll have this little dotted line come up. That means that it is going to automatically constrain it. So there's a vertical constraint and you can see that little line kind of by the arrow. And that's what it's telling you. Or this one, it's gonna automatically snap to be horizontal. Or it's gonna automatically snap to be uh, coincident. Or it's gonna snap to this point or it's gonna snap to the midpoint. So some of this one like snap to the midpoint and now it's gonna be parallel with that. Um, so a lot of them, you won't have to think about it that much because it'll just automatically do it. And then 
um, concentric is going to take a point to a point. So concentric is point to a point and coincident is point to a line. And then parallel, I think we all know what parallel means. Uh, it's just going to make your line parallel to whatever other line that you want it to be parallel to. So you'll see it'll snap to be parallel. And then tangent, um, tangent, if you don't know, is basically where two circles are going to touch at one point. So those two circles are going to touch at one point. Um, and then also um, do it with lines. So the a tangent circle to a line is going to touch. Oh, what the heck happened there? Oh, it's parallel. It's angry. Um, tangent to a line is going to make it, the circle touch that line. It does not look like parallel. It's going to make it want to touch that line at one point. Um, most of the time when you use tangent is going to be, like I said, when you're rounding out corners of a rectangle. You're going to do a rectangle and then your arc, your three-point arc. And you can see that this isn't the best arc. But if you tangent both sides to the rectangle, then it's going to be um, perfect for that rectangle. Um, so that's mostly when you use tangent. Or if you are, let's say these two are gears, you're taking the pitch diameter of a gear, which is kind of like where a gear is a mesh. Uh, you'd have these two be construction and then have them be tangent. And then you'd be able to see exactly where what your center to center of your gear would be. Um, but for the most part, we use tangent to round corners. And then horizontal is just going to snap it horizontal and vertical is going to snap it vertical. And then same thing perpendicular. If I have two lines, oh no, that's not vertical. Like that, if I have perpendicular, then they will automatically snap to be perpendicular to each other. And then equal, equal is pretty cool because it makes you have to have a lot less dimensions once you're getting through it. And it's just gonna make two lines or however many lines, it can make them all equal to each other. It's just gonna set their size equal. And you can do that with any shape, any of these you can do with any shape. Um, but yeah, equal is probably gonna be the one that you use the most. And then midpoint, also pretty self-explanatory. You just click a point and a line, and it's going to put that point on the midpoint of the line. Um, that is one that you'll usually able to be able to snap to. You'll see if you go on a line and you slide across it, you'll see that yellow square pop up. That's going to be your midpoint. And the rest of these you're not really going to use. Um, fix is just going to fix something in place. You really never want to use the fix tool just because it's not good practice. Um, so with that being said, oh wait, the dimension tool. Dimension is probably going to be the one you use the most because that's how you dimension things. So I can set this to five inches and then when you 3D print it, that line will be five inches. Um, so when you are catting, it's always good practice to not have any blue lines. So blue lines means that it is unconstrained. So basically it can move. You don't want that because when things move, they're not gonna stay exactly how you want them. Um, so you wanna constrain everything as best you can. So you can see once I, if I constrain this, so if I say the center is at the origin, if I dimension this to be 12 inches, and then I set all the sides equal. Oh, and uh, vertical. 
now it's black. Now I can't move it. So your best, um, what's it called? The, your best practice is going to make sure that everything is constrained to each other. And with that being said, um, we have this. So I'm going to show you two different, uh, two different ways of sketching. So you can see this sketch, it's kind of hard to see um, what everything is, just how it's laid out. You'll see that there are a lot of the exact same dimension, um, which means that all these other dimensions are pretty useless. They're just there taking up space and making it hard to read. Um, so it's pretty annoying to look at, especially when other people have to read it. Um, it also makes it not very easy to adjust. So, like, if both of these sides have to be 0.5 apart, I'm going to have to change both. Oh, no. I'm going to have to change both of those dimensions to 0.6 if I want them both to change. And then everything's going to get off and weird. Um, so, that's kind of one way to do it. And then you can see when you do use the proper constraints that things can look a lot simpler. Um, so basically the only difference between this one and this sketch, if you look at it, is that in this one, we did not use equal constraints. And in this one, we did use equal constraints. So you'll see that for the most part, you only have one dimension for each um, size. So I have a three inch dimension, a half inch dimension, a one inch, 1.5. Gee, I don't know why I have two three inch dimensions. Oh no. No, oh, Jesus. What? I have no idea. Um, so it just looks much nicer and it's much easier. So if I change this 1.5, everything that's 0.5 is going to turn to 0.6 and it's going to um, just mesh a lot better with how things work when it's easier to. So if everybody wants to just in their part studio that's hopefully working at this point, uh, we're going to do some extrude stuff. So if you want to make something of your own creation real quick, Make something that is round and then also make something that is square. Make sure that they don't touch each other. And give a few minutes for everybody to get something like that. And then we'll move on to some of these stuff up here. If everybody's able to sketch now. Oh my gosh, that is so great. So my challenge to you is when you do create, whatever you create, oh shoot, why do I have two? And when you do sketch, make sure that after you are done, you press this check mark. If you don't press the check mark, it will not save. Um, so just make sure you do that. Other than that, on shape saves everything after the second after you do it. Um, yeah. So try when you're doing this, try to make everything dimensioned properly. So try to make it all black. Just for practice. And let me know if you have any problems. Actually, put your circle inside of a, uh, do a circle inside of a rectangle or something that would be like a hole um, and then also do a circle.
Oh shoot, press the wrong button. There, now everything's black and you can kind of see how you can't move anything. Okay, now, so that's pretty much how you're gonna make anything. That was a very fast and simplified version of everything. Um, in the next class, I'm gonna have some some stuff that I'll be able to show. How do you make everything black? Everything is gonna be black once it's not able to move anymore. So you have to use those dimensions and constraints. So you'll see that, like if I take that away, everything kind of turns blue because it's able to move in this way. Um, so by adding a dimension, you're able to you know, change that. And then if you need to adjust your dimension, you just double click on that number and you can change it. Yeah, so when you're creating robots filters for parts, you want everything to be black and it's good practice because if it's blue, then other people can go work on the same part and things get moved around on accident or things just aren't exactly how you want them. Um, so it's good practice to from the get go to try and have everything be fully constrained and unable to do something. So now that's how you're gonna create all of your 2D drawings. So everything that's 3D is gonna start with the 2D drawing. Um, so to make these drawings 3D, we're gonna use what's called extrude. So that's basically exactly what it says. It's gonna extrude, it's gonna make that 2D drawing a 3D object. So you see when I highlight over, I'm gonna hide. You can hide the planes over here by seeing the little eyeballs if it's easier for you to see, usually keeping the plane that you're on. So it's purple. Oh. So selecting, you can see that if I scroll through this, it's gonna highlight in yellow what I'm about to do. So to make that 3D, you have all of these different extrude things. There's not as many in here that you're gonna use. I'm gonna go over them. Um, so extrude is probably going to be your most used one. And that is, you're just going to, so you press extrude and then you're going to select whichever, uh, what's called the sketch region or sketch entity um, to extrude. So go ahead and extrude your rectangle or whatever where it would have a hole in it. Go ahead and extrude both. So you can see I have a circle in here. I'm gonna extrude the circle and the thing around the circle. Um, so there are a few settings in extrude that we're gonna go through. Um, let me get through and extrude the next thing. Uh, so once you do extrude, it's going to automatically hide the sketch that you just extruded from. Um, you can make multiple parts with one sketch. You can make multiple parts in one document. Like that. Um, so we're going to go ahead and just re-show that sketch so we can extrude some more. And then on that, uh, what's it called? On the thing where you want a hole, you're going to select where you wanted the hole and then also press extrude again. And now you can see it's going to get angry because we're trying to extrude through something. So you can always go up past it and it's going to extrude higher. Um, but what I really want to talk about was these things up here. So new add, remove an intercept. So new is going to create a new part. So now you'll see that we have two parts down here and it's going to have this square part and it's going to have this circle part. It's just two parts. Um, but you can also add. So changing the add is going to make it one part. So now you're just going to have this one part with the hole coming out the top, like a peg, I guess you could say. Um, so sometimes you're going to make sketches and you're going to have to think about that because if you want to make a box, you could do that in one sketch. You could um, use that offset tool and just extrude one part higher, but you want it to be a part of it. Um, and then remove. 
So you'll see that when I press remove, it's red now because it's not going through anything. But if I press this flip axis, it's going to go up and it's going to remove that. So Onshape has a hole tool. We can create holes, but it is very annoying and doesn't always work. So I always recommend making holes like this, just making your part and then adding circles where you want your holes and then using this remove tool or just extruding and not include the hole. Um, so that's how you're going to use, that's how you're going to make holes. And then there's also intersect where it's just going to take what is intersecting um, your part, what's intersecting between both parts. Uh, it's not having me do it right now, but a lot of the time when you have multiple parts, it's going to have this merge scope or merge all. And merge scope is just going to be selecting the part that you want it to merge with. So if I'm removing something, my merge scope is going to be the part that I'm removing from. Um, so there's also a few other things in here that I want to go over. Um, so here you'll see it says blind. In blind, there's a bunch of other um, options. So the main ones you're going to use is up to next. And it's basically like this plane, and I'm going up to the next plane on the part, and it's automatically going to know that. And then also up to face, where you can select a face, and it's going to go up to that. And that doesn't necessarily have to be the face of the part that you want. So like I could extrude this up to here. and then have this extrude up to this face. Or I guess you can't really see that, up to that face. So it doesn't necessarily have to be on this um, specific part, the base, um, or up to part two. Yeah. Um, but most time you'll just use blind, and then in here your depth is gonna be how much it's extruding. Then uh, the other ones, you'll have starting offsets. You can actually offset the starting distance by however much you want. So if I wanted this to start, you'll see it's starting a half inch above where the sketch is. And that just gives you more freedom to put more things in one sketch instead of multiple sketches. And then symmetric, it's going to be symmetric. Um, uh, let me turn off the offset. It's going to extrude symmetrically. So basically, I have it extruding one inch. It's extruding a half inch up and a half inch down. And that's all symmetric does. And that's for the most part all of this. Um, so now I'm gonna, we're going to remove that and keep that removed. And then we can also go in there and extrude that again and make that one taller. And you'll see add right here, but you can also do new and it's just gonna create a new part. It's just gonna kind of be in there. So that's your extrude one. Now, if I, oh, what I just did, I could do revolve and it's just gonna revolve around the axis and it's not gonna work. Um, let's see, where can I have revolve? Oh, so if you want to make like a sphere, we could do a sphere. You can have this line right here. You can have a construction line. This is going to be what it's going to revolve around. And well, I guess you can just add a line through this circle right here. So just add a line in that circle. And then when you go to revolve, you're going to select half the circle. And it's going to ask for a revolve axis. And that basically is just a line. So you can select this line. And then it's going to revolve around that line and create a sphere. And all of these, uh, what's it called? All of the extrude tools, they're all going to have the same add or move, uh, new and intersect tools. So revolve is going to be come in handy if you do anything that's cone shaped. 
because making a cone in arm shape without revolve is a pain. So like if I wanted a cone, I would have that and then probably do some sort of conic. And then a line. And you would just revolve there. And that's how you would get a cone shape and on shape. And that's pretty much the only two that you're going to use. I don't think I've ever used any of these before. Mostly just revolve and extrude. And then all these are going to be some that you'll use. Uh, fillet is probably going to be most just like the sketch fillet. It's just that, but in uh, the extrude. So you'll select your face, and it's going to round out all the edges. So you can select all of them. It's going to round out all of the edges on whatever face you select. And then you can change that number here. Is going to be the radius of your sketch, of your um, round out, of your rounding. And that's how you round that up. Like I said, if you're ever doing any type of CNC milling, you're going to need to round out all of your edges. Not necessarily round it this way, but you need to round it out. Um, and then chamfer is the same thing as a fillet, except it is not round. It's just flat. Um, yeah. That one we don't use. And then there's also a draft, which can sometimes be a little bit annoying. So you'll see instead of removing, or you can remove, and you can also add, add an angle, and you can change that angle depending on what you want. And you can also remove the same thing. And that would be a draft. And then shell is going to be, it's pretty self symmetric it's going to create a shell, and then here's the wall thickness, which is this right here, is going to be adjusted right here. And that could be pretty useful for some applications as well. And then we have a mirror, mirror tool. I think I forgot to show the mirror tool in the sketches, um, but it is the same in the sketch. You're going to select what you want to mirror, and then you're going to select your mirror plane and it's gonna mirror your object across that plane. Um, so like, where's my, that. if I wanted to take the sphere and I could mirror it over here, and then it would be over there. And like I said, you have to press that check mark for it to stay. If you press the X, it's gonna go away. And then there's also the linear pattern for this. And then when it says direction, um, like if I wanted it to go up, I would click up here and it would go in that direction towards that. So typically you're just gonna do it in the sketch. And then transform. Transform is more useful in the, um, in the extrude when you're working with 3D um, because there's much more transformations. Just like, um, it's just like in math class, your transformations. So we can translate by our X, Y, and Z axis. You can just move it wherever you want or you can actually do it like that. Um, so that's an easy way to move parts instead of having to completely redo something. Um, and then the other one that we do is rotate and scale. So you can just put in, it's going to ask for a point. And you would just kind of probably put in whatever the center of your thing is. 
and then scale it. You can scale it down or you can scale it up. Um, so if you know that scale factor, that's pretty easy to do. And then you can also create a new plane. So sometimes this plane is not going to be what you want it to be. And you can have an offset plane here. Create a plane to offset. And then now your plane is going to be all the way over here. And you can build on that plane. Oh, wait, I think I did. Okay, I did the wrong one. Offset. If you want something to go backwards, you can just do negative. Or you no, you can't. Flip axis. That's the wrong thing. You know, flip axis. And now it's going to be one inch this way. So you can do offset. And then there's a bunch of these. The most one that you're going to use is probably this angle one. And you can angle it. Um, however, it's going to be weird. Um, but you should be able to angle it. I will figure this one out for next time. But most of the time, you're just going to be using offset to get a plane exactly where you want it to. And uh, But you can also just offset where you extrude like we did earlier. And then um, the last two is that I want to go over is derived. So basically, you can take apart from any other document. Um, which will be most likely robotics part users, which we will go over in the next class. Um, but you can actually take any part and bring it into your part studio. And then you'll be able to actually take geometry from that, which we should talk about in the last class. So you can see I can import that part in here. Um, and that's what derived is going to do. And then composite part is just going to combine two parts. So I can, um, it's going to ask you to select entities. So I can select this part and the part I just did. And then press go. And now that's going to be considered one part, one part in terms of CAD. So if I were to export that into some software, it would be one part. Um, but you can also have it as two parts. Uh, that comes in handy when sometimes you import things. Oh, no, I deleted two things. Sometimes you'll import things, and they will import in a funky way. And being able to just force them to be one piece will make things a whole lot easier. Um, so does anyone have any questions so far? That was a lot of information. And once we get to the to the last class, it'll be much easier because we'll be putting all of this to use and even in the next class. Um, Liam, you said you can't press the line to revolve an axis. So you have to have the line going all the way through. So like this one, the line is going all the way through the circle here. And then you are going to, you should be able to select it after that. Just make sure your line is going all the way through. Um, so the last two things I want to go over really quick. Get rid of all of this. Is that MK CAD that I had you um, get earlier. If you go to the side right here, you should see this MK. It's saying that the line is part of a sphere. Where is your SU? So, it should work. Did you see? So, make sure that you're skip that you are that you have the uh, part of your circle right here in the faces and sketch regions, and you're rev clicking on that revolve axis and then clicking on the line. The last thing is over here on the right, you'll see uh, MKCAD over here. If you click on that, it's going to open this, I guess what you would call a library of everything is 
just a bunch of parts. A lot of FRC parts, um, a lot of it is going to be much bigger than anything that in FTC you're going to use. Um, but for the most part, you'll be able to use some things that's going to be useful, like the fasteners um, and spacers. But the one thing I want to talk about is some of them you'll see if you go to sprockets and scroll all the way down. And this is just an example when there's some in all of them. You'll see they have sprocket and chain and it'll say configurable next to it. So if you click on that, it's going to give you a bunch of information. Um, so for the sprocket chain, number 35 chain is going to be bicycle chain and 25 chain is going to be what you're going to use most likely in FTC. And it is going to generate a sprocket that is whatever you want. So I can say I want 52 teeth on a sprocket and I want a hole in the middle. That's what your bore is. It's basically a hole in the center to be an inch. And you can even add yourself a hole pattern in here if you want. And then press insert. And then it's going to take a second, probably more than a second, because there's so many people in this document. Um, and it will generate a, uh, a sprocket there for you. And then you can actually go in here and edit it if you ever want to change anything. So you can actually take out the whole pattern if you want things like that. So this is actually how we had a, uh, a custom sprocket on our robot last year. This is how we got it uh, using MKCAD. And they have the same thing for gears and things like that. Spacers, pulleys, all those things. Uh, I am going to email the video probably tomorrow. Um, this class is probably going to be the quickest because we had to get so much stuff in one place in one, at one time. Um, the next classes will be much slower and able to actually do stuff. And then the last thing that I want to talk about and I will send out a list of these is feature scripts. Uh, oh man, I got on the wrong account real quick. So feature scripts are very similar to that, um, what's it called? To those configurable things that we're showing you is that they have a bunch more of them. So, I have a million of them, but you really don't need all a million of them. I have a list that I will send out for you to add, and we'll go over those in the next class. But to add them, you're going to go to Feature Scripts, which finds this is right here. But you should have a plus right here, and then press the drop down, and then you should have Add Custom Features, and you'll be able to type in um, what I send you. The ones that you're going to send that we're most likely going to use is chain path generator, which is going to give you, um, you're just going to put in information and it's going to generate your own chain for you to use in your CAD. Oh, thread, it's going to, I'm going through this really quick. You don't have to remember any of this. We're going to go over this again. Um, it's just going to add thread to anything that you want. It just generates it really quickly. Um, these are all things that other people code for you to use, which makes things a whole lot easier. I have a ton of them on here from FRC. Spur gear, it's kind of very similar to the sprocket one, except it, it generates a gear. And you can have it be as big as you want. Or as small as you want. And that is that. So that was a lot of information in a very short amount of time. Um, but the main way that you're going to learn how to CAD is just by practicing and figuring it out. Um, is kind of learned by trial and error. So if anybody is interested in doing stuff before the next class to kind of get this stuff down, um, 
If you go into this document, we have sketch challenge one and the answer. So this will give you all of the dimensions. This can go. This will give you all the dimensions of everything in here. And you can try to make your own version of that and try to see if you can get it. I really messed that up. Try and see if you can get it as close to this one as possible. Um, just the least amount of uh, least amount of dimensions, and that should be a good little challenge for everybody. Um, if you are stuck, you can always hover over a line or a circle, and you'll see that little you'll see the picture of what constraints are on it pop up if you get stuck. Um, but that would be a good way to practice this. So, and then in the next class, I'll have um, some of some other sketches of some bigger projects that you'll be able to see um, all how all of this gets applied. So that is pretty much all I have today. That was a lot of information. Does anybody have any questions? Um, if not, I think we are done for today. Um, like I said, that is some good practice to get. And in the next class, we're going to go over more of the assembly stuff, which makes a lot of this. How do you open the custom parts again? Um, MKCAD, you open over here on the right-hand side. You'll see this little blue thing, and it says MKCAD when you hover over it. If you click that, all of this is down here. And you can actually heart something, so you can actually like favorite the ones that you like to use um, or the configurable ones. You can actually heart it there and it'll be easier to find and you can search through them. And then the feature scripts ones were over here and add custom features. And like I said, I'll send out an email with the really useful ones of those because I have a ton of them, but I've probably used five uh, in FTC. Yeah, so recording is going to be, um, will be sent out. Okay, and with that, our first class is over. Uh, so I will see everybody next Wednesday. Bye, everyone.